Welcome to this tutorial in Unreal Engine 4 and 5 about animation notifies. Let's jump straight into it. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4.26, although this works equally well in both Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5 currently. Let's talk a little bit about what animation notifies are. So. Animation notifies are a way for you to uh, hook up functionality that will be triggered on your animations. So instead of having uh, what we have done previously, where we can go into a blueprint of the third person character, for example, and have different things trigger on keys like keys being pressed or events from like input actions like jumping or moving or begin play or things like that what we can do is we can generate a, a starting point for when an event will take place based on an animation's uh, progression so to start off there are uh, a few different ways you can do animation notifies uh, and we're going to be going through some of uh, the more common used one and what the differences are. So we'll just start and then we'll explain as we go and then we'll recap what we have learned. Um, to begin with, this is a third person character blueprint template. And if you were to click on the character, for example, or if you already know how to navigate to your animations for this, you can click on the, the template uh, blueprint and then you can go to it. Uh, you can see you have animations and mesh and things like that. If you go to where the magnifying glass is pointing where the mesh is, you can open that up and you'll get this view. Now, we have talked earlier about how a skeleton belongs to a mesh, which belongs to an animation and belongs to a blueprint, uh, an animation blueprint, and it has a physics object. These are all like linked together in a specific way. So when we were, if we were to go to like, for example, our animations here now, what we will be seeing are the animations that are available for this particular skeleton. And that is where we sort of uh, want to start. So let's uh, go to our third person jump loop. Now this is the animation that plays when the character has jumped and it is looping because it hasn't determined that it's landing yet. So here you can actually already see that we have something called a track for notifies. Let's pause this. So this is where we were to for example, add a notify. You can add a notify to uh, either a, a animation like we're doing right now, or you could do it f for a, a montage, for example, an animation montage. Uh, but we're gonna be using an animation today just to, to show off how it works. And what we can do to begin with here is if we right click here, you see we get a contextual menu saying things like notify, notify state, sync marker, manage notifies and such. In the add notify section here, you can see that we have something that says new notify and we have skeleton notifies here and also some stuff down here. Now, what we're going to start off doing is we're going to be creating a notify. So we're going to be clicking this like so, and then it's going to ask for a name. So we're going to call this our uh, jump loop notify just because we are, that's not how you spell loop by the way, uh, just so we have like a descriptive name to the show of what we're doing here in this test. You would obviously not name this uh, like so if you were to actually use this in a game or a project, but this is just for educational purposes. So we'll just uh, press enter and then you'll see that we have gotten this little uh, section uh, added here. What this means is that this little diamond over here represents the frame where the, the jump loop notify will be triggered from. So if we were to go over here we can see that at this point in time is where the in the animation where it looks like this 
it goes like so then it comes here and this then this event would fire off and then it would continue on and since this is a looping animation it would come back here again and if it were to reach this point again it would fire the notify again here so that is the first way to do a notify we're going to go into its actual functionality in a little bit but before we do that we are, i want to show you the other ways you can do a notifies as well so we're just going to be saving this right now so we have this saved here now we're going to be making a a blueprint folder because that didn't end up yeah it did okay so uh, the next step is to actually create a blueprint and you can make blueprint notifies as well So if we open up this drop down here and you type in let's say notify Like so you get some results here and we have an anime notify you also have an anime notify state down here But we're, we're gonna start off with the anime notify here for now So we're gonna choose that as a parent click select and we call this the BP anime notify also, not a very descriptive name for this particular instance, this is just for educational purposes. But what this is, is that this is a blueprint, sort of like the blueprints you've seen before, although it's fairly uh, simple in what you have available to yourself. You can make event dispatchers, you can uh, make create some variables, you can uh, implement the interfaces and such things, and you can add functions. But for the most part, what you're likely to do is that you're going to go into the override section here for functions and you're going to say you want to override the received notify event because this is the event that triggers off when the uh, the the notify starts so to speak the the the, the firing of it so now we have another notify here we we save it and we go back to our uh, animation again so now that we've created this blueprint, we can right click on this notify track again and we can go to add notify. And now you'll notice, hopefully, down here that we have actually gotten another object in our default list here. So we can actually click on our BP anim notify here and add it to the track. The first thing you'll notice is that these two have different colors. And the reason they have that is, well, this one is actually set up to have this particular color and can actually be changed to have a different color if you want to. But there is a difference between the two ways we have created in Notify right now. This Notify over here, you says it says a, uh, a time and a frame where it's gonna fire off. But if we go to this Notify over here, you'll see a time and a frame, but also that it mentions a class. So this one actually has a reference to whichever Notify Blueprint class it is connected to. Now, the differences between these two are that this Notify over here we have created for the skeleton. This means that all other um, meshes using the same skeleton as this now knows of this specific Notify that we created. So if we were to right click here and add notify and you'll go to skeleton meshes, this is what it would look like for, for those meshes. They would have this um, notify appear here now that it exists. You, can, you see that we don't see the actual BP anim notify in this list. It only appears here. That's because this one is connected to the skeleton. This one is connected to a blueprint class. So this one is sort of locked to the things that share the same uh, grouping as well not all the groupings the mesh can be different for example but they have the same skeleton uh, however this blueprint anim notify is something that is modular in the way that you can put it on a completely different skeleton and add it if you wanted to and it would work just as fine so why would you want to use this one over this one since this one can be used more modularly well there are a few reasons if you were to go to the blueprint over here that will be the animation blueprint and if you go to the event graph so here you you know of the, the update events that ticks uh, every frame for the animation blueprint to update what the animation looks like but this blueprint here for events can do more things than that 
So now that we have actually added the first notify that we called uh, jump loop notify, we can actually access it from here. Jump loop notify, and you see that it appears here. So now we have an event here. So we can say that in this animation, animation blueprint, we can access the event when that uh, notify triggers, we can do some code here. So we can do, for example, a print saying that this is a jump loop notify trigger. And if we save and we go out and we actually play now, when we, whenever we jump, you can see that it will print out the text that says jump loop, loop notify triggered. So that means that when the animation reaches this point, it fires this event. And now currently we're capturing that event inside of our animation blueprint and we're doing something with it. Now you can be very creative about this. It can be something small like setting a, a boolean or a variable to something specific. It can be something that triggers a different animation. It can be something that uh, reports that uh, you have done a swing and you are now trying to calculate uh, to see if you hit anything and send damage to a player or something like that. You can do a lot of things like that um, if you wanted to. So you can be very creative about how to use this. But uh, let's go back to our other notify. So this notify over here, this notify is the modular one and it is the one that you can place on different types of skeletons. How this one works is that if we go back to the blueprint for it is when it gets fired, this bit of code gets fired. So if we were to, for example, put another print string here and say something along the lines of blueprint notify triggered. Now we should, when we jump, be able to get both of these text messages uh, typing out in the top left there. So those are the differences and they of course have different pros and cons to them the, just because of their nature, one being modular and uh, being allowed to be used anywhere and one being tied to a skeleton. Uh, some other things that you get from this notify is the, the mesh component that it belongs to and the animation it belongs to. So using these values or uh, uh, inputs, you can also uh, have code or effects driven from them uh, in your logic that you put in here as well. Now to bring in the third example, one I don't personally use that much, but maybe I should is the notify that says anim notify state and this one is functions in the same way as the other uh, blueprint notify in the sense that it is a blueprint so it's modular and you can put it on different skeletons but you can see also here that it has more overridden functions than the other one and before we jump in to show that, let's just add this state over here. So add a notify state and you see a BP anime notify state. And this one, you see it has two diamonds on it. That's because it has a, the first diamond represents the beginning or the firing of the, the notify. And in this case, it represents, the second diamond represents the end of the notify because this is a sort of a, um, a duration uh, of, a, of a notify. So that means that you can, uh, if we go back to the blueprint, it will become easier to see it because if we go to override here, you see that you have a notify begin, you have a notify end, which is the two parts that represent the diamonds in the graph. And you also have a received notify tick. So if we were to override these three functions and print from them, and say tick in this one and we go to the begin one and we print out begin like 
pixel and then we go to the end one and we print out end. Like so. So now if we look at our animation, we should be entering the, the frame over here where it prints out the message from the jump notify, then from the anim notify, and then we should get the begin notify over here. And then for every tick that happens here, so every frame, and this seems to be approximately between 12 and 15 frames or something like that, so possibly three times, we should get a tick message. And then it will get an end uh, notify in the end for the last diamond over there, and it should be printing that. So let's see what we actually get now. So we jump, and you see it's actually a whole lot more than uh, three ticks there, but yeah, you, you see all of these messages uh, get printed to the screen. So let's recap a little bit then. You have an anim notify to allow you to, based on the progress of an animation, trigger some kind of code logic. Uh, what that code logic is up to you, of course, but it can be used in many ways. Uh, you have several different ways that you can use an anim notify. You have an anim notify that's connected to the skeleton, which allows it to be shared between skeletons. You have an anim notify that you can create by making a blueprint, which makes it a more modular anim notify. And you have the animation notify state, which is also modular because it's a blueprint, which is more of a duration type of notify. So the benefits of having the skeleton notify is that you can access the event directly in your animation blueprint. And the benefit of the other blueprints are, of course, that they are modular and you can do something fairly generalized for different types of uh, animations and uh, meshes that trigger the actual event. So we will probably be going into this more in the future, how to use this for actual game knowledge, like showing off how it can be used. Um, for example, a player swinging at someone else and inflicting damage or something like that. But um, I think for a basic understanding of this, this will do fine. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you might have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.